Will you go in there and my earbuds are in there? Mm-hmm. Yeah, in the big pocket. Thank you. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Oh, Bonder! So I did waiting to yeah, for security. Yeah, I'm gonna just do admittal. admit all. I think that'll help get everyone in. Yeah, I turned that off last time, which goofed me up because it, you know I. Yeah, on the website. Oh, okay. We would archive it for people who can't. Wendy, also, would you grab my notebook and pen? Sorry, I meant to grab all that. Yeah, perfect. And I've got a pen stuck down there. Dr. Morris, Dr. Nordland. All right. Can everyone hear me? I just want to make sure because I turned my okay earbuds on. Okay. And the thank you, Megan. Um, the way that you uh, the the way we enter is we have everyone on mute. So feel free to unmute yourselves. One of the things that we are we've been working on is that with this is it's more of a dialogue than a me lecture for 45 minutes and then people ask questions so we decided to change it gay i think i learned something about you this week that either i didn't remember or i didn't know are you a retired rn oh you're muted sorry let's see if i can Gay, turn your mic on. You have to unmute yourself, please. Well, I'm old. See, I can't figure out all this stuff. Can you can hear me now, right? Yeah. Uh, yes, I was in I was in nursing for 30 years. I was in nursing service in all different kinds of jobs for 15 years, and I taught nursing at UW-Eau Claire for 15 years. Hi. Dawson, did you hear me? But Dawson looks frozen. Looks like Dawson disappeared. We're on yeah. our own. <laughs> Well, we can, let's just have a little coffee. Huh? Hi, hi, Robert. Hi there, how you doing? We can have a little <laughs> medical discussion. We have a retired physician and a retired nurse here. Did you hear my okay, answer? Dawson's back. Dawson, you're muted. You have to unmute yourself. And second. All right. Uh, my apologies. Our uh, internet uh, decided to crash on me there for a second. All right. Okay, so Gay, I, I, I think I knew that. I just, I don't think I committed it to memory. And so we were talking about some medical folk in our um, congregation. And uh, I, I think as you all were connecting, uh, Dan uh, just retired in January. And then um, Bob claims he's retired, but he sure is very active. <laughs> in the medical community around here, so. And um, Rich, are you up north visiting your dad or are you here and just posting beautiful pictures on your Facebook page? Those are the palm trees in my backyard. They change colors every year. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> They're lovely. That's great. But um, <laughs> um, thank you for the uh, wonderful birthday card that arrived 
Rich, I appreciate it. So thank you. I wanted to thank you for that. Well, let me um, dive right in. Uh, there's lots of wonderful things happening um, around here, and I just want to let you know. And, and like I said, we're, we 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 feel like we've taken a we wanted to take a different format to make it an actual dialogue rather than lecture for 45 minutes and and then uh, open up to questions. And so um, I have a couple things I want to highlight for you. And then, of course, if you have questions about any of those things or, you know, things that I don't cover, um, I'm certainly happy to to visit about that, uh, about anything you want to talk about. Uh, first of all, I just want to share, it's probably because it's fresh on my mind that um, last night we had a virtual um, evening with your pastors. If you remember, that's our um, visitor um, uh, prospective member event that we have. And we typically have that in um, one of our homes, but uh, obviously don't feel that it's safe yet to do that. And so, you know, it's, I think it's a little less um, exciting or interesting perhaps to do it virtually. So we only had three people um, as, as a part of it. Two of them are joining on Sunday. What's interesting and what struck me as so interesting with that, though, was is that the two people who are joining have never worshiped with us in person. They live here in Naples, but they, they worship with us virtually and have found us in a way during the uh, pandemic. One volunteers with Bargain Box. That's how she's started to get connected to us. And then uh, one of the people who is with us has been worshiping with us virtually and has never been to Naples. Um, and so I just, I was really struck by, uh, the, the possibilities of how ministry may, um, look and feel different, uh, in, in, I, and I think some exciting ways, uh, moving forward. And so it was a really, uh, fascinating conversation, uh, to, to meet new people, which is of course why we why we do it, but um, it was just a, it was a really interesting evening uh, last night and getting to know those folks. And so uh, I, I just, was, I, I, like I said, it's, it's fresh on my mind and it just struck me. And so um, that was a really great uh, evening last night. And then um, that leads me to a, another meeting that I had yesterday, but also reflects that, um, the, the spirit of what we're doing there, and that is our technology enhancement and expansion. Um, I've mentioned this some, and you'll um, really hear about it because we're uh, producing a, a brochure that will be mailed to the congregation explaining what we're doing and also asking for um, all of us to, to pitch in as we're able to make it happen financially. But what, uh, we are in an exciting place because we have a group of lead donors who have committed and, and given uh, just shy of $50,000 then uh, because of the, um, the generosity of, of the church, we're doing so well that we've been able to transfer $50,000 of church funds. Um, so we have $100,000 uh, in total. And then we have a family that has donated to um, cover the expense of uh, updating Beverly Hall um, and pay for that entire expense. And so uh, what we will be doing uh, in Beverly Hall, for instance, is that it will be um, outfitted with increased, uh, like a new projector, because I'm trying to remember, Beverly Hall was built, I believe, in, in or around, say, 2008, don't quote me on that, but I think it's like 2007, 2008. So the projector that's in there dates back that long and that technology changes. And so we'll be putting in a, a much stronger projector. We'll be putting in um, the ability to record in there. So for instance, we have a virtual concert that uh, is happening this Sunday at four o'clock. Um, that's in the sanctuary, which is great, but you have three musicians on the chancel 
in an empty sanctuary, which, so it's this enormous room when we have one of the premier small performing venue halls in the county, but we can't do any of our concerts in there right now because we can't record. And so we'll be able to record and stream concerts from uh, Beverly Hall. And I think there will also be a service to the community as well. And so I'm just really excited about that. And, and the family that has given that gift is very excited about that. So um, we're in exciting shape uh, as we roll that out to the congregation. And yesterday I was in the meeting about what's, you know, what's the step? Let's get this going. And, um, and so I've learned interesting lessons about how much, how many electronics we really do buy from China and how the um, COVID pandemic has affected the supply chain. And so we're going to just get in line like everyone else and do our best to uh, get things in place, but we'll be upgrading all of the cameras in our sanctuary to um, uh, high def. And so that just means it'll be a, a better picture for everyone who is watching. It allows much more flexibility. Um, we're actually adding two cameras to that so that, again, we have more views, particularly of choir and musicians. And um, as the staff and I have called it, we will also have what I call the bald spot cam right over the back of my head. Um, so that we can see into the sanctuary and have some, some, again, a little more creativity and more shots where people can see what's happening in the sanctuary. That'll also be for baptisms, memorial services, things like that. Uh, we're enhancing a little bit of our lighting that we put in four years ago so that um, we continue to make that area more visible if you're watching it online. And so we feel really good about where that's headed. So um, those were the phases that we were talking about yesterday and, and that we're gonna get moving on. And I just feel really good about that and feel great about where that will take us because, you know, of course we don't know what, we don't know what the current um, pandemic, how it will continue to live itself out. Um, I was listening to a, New York Times podcast last night, um, their medical reporter saying he believes it'll be a, a challenging uh, fall and winter, but that he sees a lot of hope on the horizon for the spring because of um, a vaccine and uh, that he really believes that the pandemic will draw to a close here in the States by um, early to mid-summer of 21, which is sooner than, than many have been telling us. So I'm going to hold on to that hope um, because this particular reporter is not an overly optimistic person. But what we also know is that half of our congregation worships uh, or leaves Naples during at least three months out of the year. And so what this allows us to do is to remain connected to our congregation while they're away. And so, um, and as, we, as I said about my experience last night, it allows us to connect with people who may be interested in calling Naples UCC some type of church home, even if it's virtual or online, because likely. He's either thinking or he froze. That's what the younger demographic. <laughs> Last him. <laughs> Maybe we need need, need new Wi Fi in his office. <laughs> That's what I think. <laughs> I think so. Uh oh. There, you. there you go. Can't hear you. Now he's One, on. I, I unmuted. The other thing is we're. Uh, we're we just signed the contract for our fiber optic cable uh, that is coming in, but we're waiting on the city to sign off on our um, application and the, the approval of that process. So anyway, that's the other thing is to ensure the reliability of our internet across not only the campus, but with the amount, because we have another Zoom class being held on campus right now. So we have a lot of bandwidth going um, on and off the campus right now. 
Um, but that's nothing compared to what a Sunday morning is like. And so, you know, the, I think the future of the church looks like less brick and mortar and more virtual opportunities and things like that. We've actually seen growth in our children and family areas because we gather them starting at 8.30, 8.45 on Sunday mornings, and it's all mostly virtual. We've gathered them, I think, twice in person, but it's mostly virtual because um, they can do it at home. They don't have to get everyone up and dressed in a fancy way. They can just be in pajamas and do uh, Sunday school together, or they can do it from their grandparents' home. They can do it from uh, one, if not two of our families have second homes uh, in the region. And so if they're at the beach house or things like that, they can do uh, from wherever they are. And so, or those programs are also archived and they can do them later in the week. And so it allows a lot of flexibility for, for people who are busy, mobile, um, and it, it doesn't say to them, you have to abide by our timeline, rather we will um, come to you and work with you. So it's, it's a really interesting, fascinating um, part of ministry that's, that's happening right now. So let me pause there and just, I'm, I'm just curious to answer questions or to hear feedback or thoughts about any of that. Well, I, I could make one quick comment. I'm, I'm excited to see the, the more we're getting into this and in that I, I do remember at a time when we were new members and there had been the discussion that we really need to improve the lighting and we have to improve the sound system and a lot of things. And, and in my mind, I'm thinking, gee, there are so many things to put money into. Do we really need to be doing some of this? You know. And yeah. then as this pandemic has come along, I've realized how far ahead we are of most churches in being able to provide what we already are providing and any way we can expand on that, like, like, uh, like uh, you know, how McSpadden came along to be so good, but now we could do Beverly and, and, uh, and it is a beautiful venue to listen to a concert, but if it's just a little pianist, you know, performing, it's great. But if you want to record all that, I can understand the importance. So, so that's, that's positive. It's very good. Yeah. And, and one of the things that we're also doing that, that I failed to mention is that um, Nelson Hall 207, 104, 101, and then down the road, we have, a, it, it's what we currently call the book nook. Um, we, we have plans for each of those rooms to make interactive in some ways like this, but on a broader scale so that um, for instance, that's what Deb is doing this morning with her book study is she is teaching it online, but the, the idea in the future hope and plan is, is that she will, um, that as people feel safe and as it is safe, people will be in the room learning one-on-one. -on -one, and then if people are either unsafe or don't feel safe to come or sick, perhaps live away um, or frankly, in the midst of season, the highest season, don't want to drive for a one hour book study, then it gives them the freedom to join it and not have to be there in person. So um, we have a, uh, that's the, the secondary part of that plan is it's a Nelson Hall. So the first priority is the sanctuary because of the impact on worship. And the second piece is um, Nelson Hall. So that all of our concerts, classes, lectures, uh, meetings can all be very interactive no matter where people are. Dawson. Um, yeah, Bill. Um, a, a belated happy birthday. You look thank younger you. than ever. So. <laughs> You're, I appreciate that. And thank you for your kind email. Thank you. You, you bet. Um, one of the things that I'm hoping is being developed is a good integrated communication plan. Um, the more that you guys are ready, the more that we should be reaching out and making sure that the broader community, um, and I don't know how broad that is, really knows what's right. going on and has an invitation to participate. Because I'm amazed at how many people really don't even know that we're streaming live uh, church services and, and certain things. So, 
Right. No, I appreciate that. Um, I, I would say I, I would be very forthright and honest to say I feel like that's one of those things that every day we learn something about how to communicate better and more effectively. For instance, we were talking about, I think we were actually talking about new members and uh, the other day in a staff gathering and um, I think it was Sharon Harris Ewing said, you know, they don't have to live in Naples to talk about joining the church. And, um, and I, cause we were talking about doing a, a targeted email for people who might be interested in joining the church who have worshiped with us or things like that, that we just haven't reached out to. And I thought for a second and said, you're completely right, but it's this total paradigm shift for us to not be thinking just in a, let's say, Collier County mentality or even tighter than that. And, and so I agree. One of the good things that we've had an opportunity to do, um, and yet it's a growing edge for us, is we have brought in um, uh, Bold Design, which is a communications firm here in Naples, works with several um, nonprofits in town. And um, we're working closely with them for them to guide us on some of this, you know, to, I mean, it is the quintessential ask the people who, who ask the experts rather than trying to figure it out ourselves. So they're helping us. We're learning. And again, because it is a paradigm shift, it's a fascinating, but it's fun, honestly, but it's also, it's like, oh, we didn't think about that. And so, yeah, we're, we're definitely doing that. And I appreciate that feedback because, it is good. And actually, yesterday, Megan and I had a conversation um, later today. I, I have a board meeting. Oh. Frozen. <laughs> the fiber optic now. I think <laughs> Where's the fiber optic? <laughs> he's stepping into a parallel universe. <laughs> <laughs> right. He doesn't know what we're talking about him, does he? No. <laughs> He's in deep yeah. thought right now. <laughs> right. He has to Going reboot. to come out with something very <laughs> profound. <laughs> yeah. Right. Hey, he's coming back. He's, good uh, against he's coming back. <laughs> so to try to get to try to get some guidance from um, you know uh, an institution like Chicago Theological about how they communicate nationally or more broadly rather than just locally or regionally. So. I, I think we're asking the right questions to the right people. It's just making sure that we onboard that information as quickly as possible. Yeah. Nancy that. And I, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead, Kate. Well, um, I just think it's really exciting, all the things that our church is doing. I just feel so proud to be a part of Naples UCC, and I know the only problem I think is I'm old, but I like technology and I do all kinds of things with technology. Yeah. But, you know, I have friends that are even older than I am and, and they just, a few of them just really don't get it and they just so miss traditional worship and in the sanctuary and I don't know, I don't know, there's no way to read it. <laughs> okay. But but you're on a Zoom meeting. I mean, the friends I'm talking about would never go to a Zoom meeting. I don't know how we reach out to them, but I, I just, uh, you know, I love it, but I wish there well, was. Well, yeah. So I will tell you, um, as I've tried to reiterate time and again, is that I miss it too. I mean, I had oh, texted yeah. in, in my devotional for Monday yeah. is I didn't go to seminary to preach to a camera or to not have a congregation. I mean, that's not, none of this is, what's fun for me is to think about new ideas and to think mm -hmm. about the church of the future. What's not fun is an empty sanctuary and an empty campus and to not feel physically connected to our congregation. So I certainly get that. I certainly hear it. Um, and I certainly feel it. Um, I will tell you one of the things that we continue to work very hard on and um, I want to give tremendous credit to our congregational care area um, 
to Stephen Ministers, specifically to our Board of Deacons, because what we've worked to do is um, reach out to people, particularly those who live alone, and to say, how are you doing? You know, what's going on? We were commenting yesterday, I don't know, in some meeting that I was in, I said, you know, let's not forget that when the pandemic first started, we sent the staff home to work remotely. It was on or around March 15th. Pentecost was at the end of May. And I said in my, to myself and probably to the clergy team, we'll be back by Pentecost. It'll be all right. You know, and here we are October 8th and, you know, I'm hopeful early 21. And so it's, it's just one of these things that um, I think for us to really, so we're trying to, to balance both as best we can and know how to provide a quality worship experience online that people can feel good about. What I believe is happening and, and, and most of the people I've spoken to seem to concur I really think what people are missing is the communal connection, because I think we can provide a good worship experience or as best we can, and it's growing online, but it's really difficult to provide community online. I mean, some people live that way, but I don't think most of us do. And so what the staff and uh, membership and growth and social committees are doing in a renewed effort is to find and dream about safe community gatherings, um, mostly outdoors um, on the campus that we can do together. So for instance, likely, so like one of my favorite events of the year, of course it's food related, is the Thanksgiving dinner that we all, that we have I, um, usually the week, yeah, week before Thanksgiving. And I always see that as kind of like the big welcome back party. Well, <laughs> so what would it look like to say to everyone, come park and, um, and do it as either a tailgate or we'll give you two parking spaces and you can set up a table or we can help you set up a table next to you. And we would still have it catered as we always do, but it's not going to be an McSpad and it's going to be... Um, outdoors because one of the gifts of living in paradise is as the rest of the country moves inside, we're moving outside. And so, um, you know, so we're thinking about how do we take current programming and make it more accessible and safe? And then what are new programs that we haven't even thought about that we can do? Um, and like Deb talked about yesterday, um, hosting a class on the lawn, just trying to be able to gather people. What I do know from, and, and I, I'm, again, I don't, I'm not a public health expert. I just play one on TV, but I read a lot about all of this from a variety, wide variety of sources. I think one of the most dangerous things we can do is get a congregation with a median age of 74 in one room, breathing recycled air, um, and uh, and begin to fill the room. And because my great fear, and I don't use the word fear a lot, but my great fear is that we somehow become a super spreading congregation. And then all of a sudden we find ourselves in a, in a different kind of crisis. And so what we have done, uh, actually uh, are in the midst of doing is we are putting together a task force of six people that will be half lay and half staff to begin um, putting into place um, protocols for when we can safely return so that the congregation sees forward momentum about there is an end game here. We do plan, come, we are going to come back someday. Um, obviously, no one knows when. But, um, you know, and it's a laborious process. I mean, it's pre-registering to come to worship. We believe that our congregation, I mean, our sanctuary, which holds 650, can likely hold about 250 with social distancing. And so 
we have to allow more time in between services. So we would likely, you know, so we might potentially have to add a third service. We might have to, we're going to have to change the start times of one of our services. I mean, so there's a lot of logistical things, but we can make it work when it's safe or more safe to do so. And I assume Say that's that. about this comes from somebody missing singing in sanctuary choir. I don't see how that can be on the, in the foreseeable future. No congregational singing, no bulletin, I mean, no yeah. hymnals, no Bibles, nothing in the pew backs, no spoken Lord's prayer. Um, because now the CDC is telling us, um, or perhaps being more direct with us, that it's really in spoken, it's probably more um, like a 16 foot spray. Um, yeah. we, we used to think it was only singing that was 16 feet and that spoken was six, but now they're saying likely it's, it's much broader than that. And so, um, and that's part of what we're trying to help people understand is that um, a worship experience during the pandemic looks and feels very, very different. No processional, no recessional, no fellowship time, none of that, because we just can't do it safely. Dawson, a couple of questions come to mind. Uh, yep. First, your previous emails indicated when um, from the globalepidemics.org uh, that when uh, Collier had two weeks in a row in the green zone, we would reopen. So that's been changed or modified? No, that's, no, that's still the plan, but we still will have to have contact tracing. We'll still have to likely do, but we want to be able to demonstrate to our congregation that though that again there's forward momentum and then there's plans have we had the, any, sorry go ahead well you know part of the challenge is because uh governor DeSantis having lifted all orders in florida um so there's a there's a almost a populist streak that's happening in this state where people are saying well i can go to whatever restaurant I want to, and it's 100% capacity and things, why can't I go to church? And then there are some churches that are back open or are opening. And so there's some increased um, pressure, if you will, from some saying, why aren't we opening? And so we're trying to say, we felt since August, well, really even before, but in August, the council voted unanimously for this path and we still believe that this is the safest path obviously the council can always revisit that that's their power and authority but there's also you know ramifications just like for instance um i was in a meeting two weeks ago to plan christmas eve worship to be online in a very um in a big way and uh, and so there are financial costs, there are contracts we have to sign, things like that. So if all of a sudden the council were going to change direction, then as I said to our lay leadership, like you got to do it now because we're, you know, it's October 8th, we're moving forward with these plans, you know, and so there's got to be that balance. But no, the current plan, Dan, is to stay with what we've decided. Okay. And um, has anybody died of COVID in our congregation? No one has died. We have had two additional um, diagnoses this past Monday of church members. So we are now at four um, members of our church, excuse me, five members of our church who have been diagnosed. One has been hospitalized, um, but all are doing well. Actually, the person who was hospitalized yesterday was their 75th birthday and doing uh, well. So, can I ask a, just kind of a practical question and also a, a first a compliment. Uh, today's uh, uh, devotional was your uh, acknowledging the 40 wonderful years yeah. of David Kaiser yeah. Cross and uh, his retirement being with this 40 years on, on this Sunday and so on. And, you know, we all want to be doing anything we possibly can. We've sent in, you know, different ways to email messages and, and various yeah. ways we could do things. Um, but there's kind of, uh, we just need to clarify uh, a possible approach uh, of a drive-through, giving away some of these cookies idea. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and, and that's kind of getting pressured a little bit to get those cookies ready. But the other thing is, 
Um, there's also been a movement afoot of some people wanting to just come and be in the parking lot during your, the service or something. And so can you clarify where you kind of stand on that or what's going on? I, I think we, we need some guidance on that. Sure. Um, I'm not aware of the parking lot um, part of that. Um, and I would ask that people not do that during the service because um, so let me walk you through the weekend. I don't think anyone from the Kaiser Cross family is on this call. I don't see anyone. Um, so um, David's kids are surprising him and um, his daughter Sarah is flying in from Manhattan and uh, they will all arrive uh, Saturday for lunch and he has no clue that they are arriving. And so um, that will be a big uh, surprise um, and excitement for him. And, um, and then there are two very, very dear friends from their previous congregation that are coming over on Saturday as well um, to surprise and celebrate him. And then um, David will um, preach on Sunday morning we are, um, there are three video segments in worship. One is uh, someone from our men's group um, thanking David because David started that group, has kept it going. And that's a whole, I mean, that's really something that this church has never had before in, in this form. And so um, we have that. The chair of our board of trustees, um, June Ballou, has recorded the message because that's a board that David works most closely with. And then uh, to say thank you. And then um, I, this afternoon, am recording an interview with his three kids to talk about, you know, what was it like growing up with your dad and, you know, things like that so that the church can see uh, his kids a little more up close and personally. And then um, we had a little bit of a twist in the plans, and that is our conference minister and our regional minister were supposed to both be here, um, but they have shut down all travel to churches due to COVID. And so we're trying to figure out if we're going to do it via video or if I may do it or something. But there's a beautiful liturgy of release that releases David from his um, call to us and of his um, ordination vows. And so it's a poignant but I think important reminder about what that represents in this time. And then um, when that's complete, he is going um, home where there will be, again, he doesn't know about it, but Deb does. Uh, there will be a lunch um, provided by the church uh, for his family and for their friends that are visiting um, to thank him again and, and to thank Deb um, and just to honor him. And so that's part of the, I don't need people in the parking lot because he needs to get home and eat. Um, and then at three o'clock from three to four, and this was something we added, but it's, I think it was in yesterday's I forget what date is some days, uh, yesterday's e-blast that um, we, uh, we have a, we're having a car parade from three to four uh, where people, David will be under the portico and people can drive through. Um, so masked and distanced, um, but can roll down the window and say, thank you and wave and blow him a kiss or whatever they want to do. And, um, and then we've had uh, some wonderful cookies prepared because one of the things that I appreciate most about David is that he loves sweets. And so we have cookies that everyone who comes through will, will receive. And then... Um, Dawson, you just totally cut out there. Uh, we lost you. We were kind of on sh uh, silence here. Okay. Where, where did I drop out? No, what I'm was the last thing you heard? I, I've, heard, I've heard you the whole time. It wasn't, it wasn't, you, it wasn't you, Dawson. Okay. Okay. And then the other, the other thing in worship is um, during the offertory, we've collected pictures of his ministry. And so we will be showing pictures of his ministry uh, during the anthem. And um, then 
Ronnie Ballone, our vice moderator, will be presenting the gift um, that has been received uh, for the congregation. Uh, the staff has a small gift to present and, um, and reading a resolution that the church council passed um, unanimously to honor David. And so um, he will be very celebrated much to his discomfort, but I think very appropriate for all that he's done for us. And at the time of his retirement, I mean, he has served the church faithfully. And, um, and then he'll go home, have lunch, be back for the car parade from three to four. And, uh, and he's done. Yeah. But actually, he's, I'm sorry. He's actually con I'm he's sorry. consulting, he's consulting no, with I, us for a few I was weeks. Trying to get I'm sorry I got cut out there, Dawson. And so I'm just trying to clarify that that the wonderful program for the morning with all these outstanding things, uh, uh, but trying to keep the parking lot empty till the three o'clock idea where there's kind of a parade and that's mm -hmm. uh, that's the way three to four o'clock then, correct? And frankly, I mean, I'm not trying to be too flippant, but I'm not sure why anyone would want to sit in a hot parking lot. I mean, yeah. During worship, I mean, you're going to, you can't come into the building and because the campus is closed and, uh, and you will have a chance to physically see David at three o'clock. Dawson. Perfect. Perfect. Um, Good. Okay. A, a couple of my uh, committee members um, who are also not members of the church have asked um, a series of questions, some of which I don't know how we can publicly uh, or even if we should say something about it. But one is they're asking, is Deb retiring too? Mm -hmm. Secondly, um, they're unaware of the, uh, and it's not just NUCC rule about um, David participating in any kind of our uh, service, although he can sit in his couch and watch like the rest of us, I guess. I didn't even think of that, but um, <laughs> so is there gonna be some, like an update kind of thing about that situation or how do, how do we answer those questions? Um, David can, David can fully participate in the life and current and uh, ministry of the congregation. Um, that is the only rule around that is that it's negotiated at the time of, of departure and of uh, retirement. And, um, and especially with a spouse still on staff, um, I have no concern about that. And so David is not restricted. Bill is Okay, so he doesn't have that restriction. That's good for me to know because yeah. I, I said I didn't really know for sure. Yeah, it is. It is not beyond. Uh, it is in the tradition of churches in the United Church of Christ, particularly that often when a pastor retires, um, that they need to cut uh, relationships and ties so that the new pastor uh, can get, uh, have the opportunity to connect, make those connections. That is typically more reserved for um, senior ministers because for the allowance of, of uh, real authority to be passed. And also um, we don't have an incoming executive minister right away. So in some ways we will achieve that um, in, just almost by attrition, you know, I mean, just because of that in between time. Um, Deb has intentions to retire in the foreseeable future, but she's not retiring at this time. And I have said to her, you just work as long as you are happy and healthy and know that you have my deepest gratitude to do that. So they're not, they're not physically moving anywhere and actually, um, Again, with COVID, they, they spend far less time, far less time with family um, because of being safe. And so, but having them close by is nice. And so, uh, as Deb has shared with me, of course, she's deeply grieving the death of her mother, but uh, he's in a good place and, and feels good about what's going on. So, Deb turns, you know, in the South, we don't talk about women's ages, but Deb turns 65 in December. And so, I mean, just to be mindful that um, I anticipate her retirement, she and I've had 
some conversation, but we've not nailed down a date. You're still a young woman. I was going to say, <laughs> and as I tell her, in Naples, you're just getting going. So, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. But I appreciate the question. There, that's and, right. And we answered, um, I had not thought about the restricted restrictions question, but that, that would be good. Um, we, we attempted to answer the Deb question um, when David announced his retirement, but it would probably be good for us to go back and, and re, uh, readdress that. So thank you, Bill. Good. Thank you too, Dawson, for all the answering my, my questions. I, I'm, I'm yeah. going to have to rush here, but I want to thank okay. you for a great presentation. No, I appreciate healthy, it. Stay everybody. <laughs> See you, you as well, Bob. Sunday. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Bye. And then, um, Let's see, what else was, it? oh, um, I have mentioned uh, previously and, and um, I'm trying to think if we've, I don't think we've written about it yet, but we will. Um, the church council, uh, board of trustees, HR committee and executive committee all unanimously agreed um, to add two uh, positions. In some ways, you know, I, I can't say that anything that's happening right now isn't in response to the pandemic, but in some ways it's also just strategic decisions for the life of the congregation. And so we are, um, we are adding an executive director position who will, an who will report to um, the executive minister. Uh, this person will oversee directly, oh, I always go down these paths and get in trouble, uh, receptionist, um, IT, um, our controller, uh, bargain box. Seems like there's at least one other thing, um, in part because those are some of our largest financial entities. So the, oh, and, and, and facilities. And so um, this, what we're seeking in an ideal candidate is someone who brings um, business acumen and nonprofit experience to the table because the on an average year, when you put bargain box, precious cargo, the church, our mission giving, and our endowment together, those five entities um, on an average year are, be are between four and a half and $5 million. And so one of the things that we realized that needed to happen um, in expenditures uh, that needed to happen is we needed um, to deepen our level of uh, support on the administrative side of the house. And that was partially because feedback that David gave us and then feedback that Sharon McGarra gave us when she retired is that she kind of felt that she was the only person in that world in many ways that she was. And if she went away, for instance, it took away our ability to cut checks while she was on vacation, unless it was a real emergency. And we're too big of an operation for that to do that. And so um, I'm excited to say um, we've had the position posted um, for a week now, and we've had 26 um, strong applicants from uh, very well-known foundations in our community, the hospitality industry, um, I think one from FGCU. Um, we've, we've had a really strong pool of candidates and, and that would be, all of those would be where I would wanna see candidates from. We've kept 13 of them for further review and we are not cutting off um, applications until the 16th. I mentioned earlier, just in passing, David and I have agreed uh, together in consultation and partnership with lay leadership. He's gonna consult with us for a few hours a week for probably up until about Thanksgiving. And the main part of what he will do is he is helping me finalize or complete that hire and to cross train that person. And, and so on the administrative side of the house, and he's willing to come back and cross train um, the next executive minister. And depending on who we find, um, we may or may not need that. But so um, I feel really good about that. And I think that will really help our entire um, staff feel supported. But frankly, it also really helps our, I believe, um, business 
uh, committees, I, namely our endowment and our board of trustees feel supported. Um, you would not believe the number of hours that June Ballou puts in up here. And in part because it has become such a large operation, we almost need a volunteer person who puts in a half-time job. And so um, we finally determined we needed to do that. So I, I hope that in the foreseeable, very foreseeable future, we'll be able to introduce that hire. The second person was the, is the director of production, and that has to do with how do we increase um, our ability to have an on quality online experience for classes, worship, concerts, uh, weddings, memorial services, all of that. Um, and I'm thrilled um, the the council and everyone were super supportive of the idea and approved it actually as a full time position. And I, I told them, I said, I want to go on record. I actually saved money and went with a part time hire because I found the right person um, and he's not available to us full time. Um, but he because he also works at the Sugden Theater, he is their master um, sound designer. And so um, and he grew up church. He's actually been one of our sound technicians. And one day we were working together and I said, what do you do when you're not here? And he said, oh, I work at the Sugden. And I said, well, what do you do? And he said, well, I have a degree in production and in sound design. And I went, we need to talk. And so um, we now have someone with a degree in sound engineer, uh, engineering and uh, a degree in production. And so Brad is taking us already to an entirely new level. Um, and it will be really overseeing the upgrade of our um, technology enhancement program. And so he's a phenomenal addition to our team and has only been with us maybe two weeks. Um, so I'm just thrilled and, and grateful for the commitment of our lay leadership uh, to see that through. So Brad's the right person at the right time. I, I think we will reach probably sooner rather than later the flashpoint of part-time versus full-time, but we'll cross that bridge when we, when we get there. So, um, so those are uh, new staff faces that will be um, introduced um, to you. And then you should any, it should be like today, tomorrow, well, depending on how dependable the postal service is, uh, you should be receiving a new production that is called On Eagle's Wings. Um, that is a new, piece that we are producing. It's going to be mailed. It will also be available online, but one of the things we heard from our congregation and wanted to respond to is that they wanted more physical mailings, not just everything digitally. And so um, the traditional steeple, monthly steeple lights is going away because what we discovered was we were just regurgitating information uh, in the steeple lights and it was taking 50 staff hours a month um, to produce the steeple lights and and so to regurgitate what we were already putting in the bulletin and and e-blast and things like that and so we felt like it had probably lived out its time and so the on eagles wings will be quarterly it still will have birthdays anniversaries a lot of those communal things but you, what you'll find is it's more in-depth stories about things we're doing our Kind of our goal, if you think about what uh, perhaps some of your colleges, universities send you as a touch base, you know, what's happening at the college and, you know, alumni, alumnus stories and things like that. Well, it, we hope to have a, a, a high touch quality feel and it will also go to all of our mission partners, um, national staff, things like that to really tell our story about all the good that we're doing. So the first one features what we've done in the midst of COVID. And so I'm eager for everyone to see it. It's taken a little longer than we anticipated to get off the ground, but um, we're really proud of it. And so it, it dropped last Friday or Monday, Monday. So it should be arriving literally today, tomorrow. And it has all of the programming because we didn't do an, an annual enrichment program or brochure because everything is changing week by week, day by day. And so what we're gonna do is print quarterly programming in the On Eagle's Wings to see 
um, because if, if suddenly we can open fully, then you know it, it looks different than if we're doing virtual and things like that. So that's what we're doing. We're nearing the hour mark. What other questions can I answer or what have I not covered that you need me to or would like me to? I think it's been great. Thank you. Well, thank you. And I like this format so much better than talking into an empty screen. Um, so thank you all for, uh, for being here and, uh, and for putting up with the uh, in and out of the uh, internet. I apologize, but we're working on that as well. May I close us with a word of prayer as we continue on our day? Let's join our hearts. Gracious and loving God, even though we are apart, we know that we are held together by your grace and your love. And so we are truly thankful. We are mindful also this weekend of David and his ministry, what he means to us personally and what he means to you and to your church. And so as we celebrate and perhaps shed a few tears we are also mindful that you are with us in all of what life brings. And so surround us with your goodness, surround us with your grace, and let us be beacons of hope wherever we find ourselves this day. In this spirit, we ask in your many names. Amen. Amen. Thanks again, everyone. Please stay safe, and we will see you one way or the other very soon. And belated happy birthday. Thank you. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. I will be uh, out um, for a few weeks uh, starting next week to be with my uh, family who I've not seen since Christmas. And uh, I'm, I'm eager to go to Texas and catch a little bit of my breath and, uh, and see nieces and nephews and all that good stuff. So I'm looking forward to that. But I will be back soon. I promise. Thanks, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye.